Quad 4 is a game changer for AI coding, or at least that is what YouTube AI influencers are trying to tell us. Is this really the case? Let's find out together. Hey everyone, my name is Videlin, and in this video we're going to have a look at Quad 4, the new models by Anthropic, and their preference and targeting towards AI coding. We're going to have a look at what the people that are using the models are saying, what those models really are, and at the end, I'm going to share some of my experience with the new models. Let's get started. The new Quad 4 models are primarily targeted towards AI coding using tools, AI agents, and MCP tooling support. That is not a bad thing, but it seems that Anthropic have given up on the idea of building general chatbots. So in this case, uh, let's see what they're saying about their new models. And here at the start, they're saying that these models setting are setting new standards for coding, advanced reasoning, and AI agents. They even as go as far as saying that quote Opus 4 is the world's best coding model. At least this is what their benchmarking suggests, of course. I'm highly skeptical of this since uh, this is a pretty much absurd way to describe that your model is the best without uh, giving the people the chance to actually evaluate in real world settings are these models are the best. But it seems like that Anthropic are essentially going over the hype train along with OpenAI and Google and they're just claiming whatever they want. Of course, I will probably not get sponsored by Anthropic for saying that, but this is just my opinion. Some of the concrete things that are happening within these new models that I really like is the ability to do extended thinking with two wheels. So during thinking, those models can essentially call some of the available tools that the models have and incorporate this contextual information within the thinking process. So this would probably give you a boost when you want to have some sort of external information integrated within the thinking of your models. Also, they're talking about calling tools in parallel, which is uh, pretty great since this in agentic settings or workflow settings would be highly usable as well. So next, they're saying that cold cold is now generally available up until now their coding tool was in beta. And they say uh, some of the more interesting stuff here is that they have some native integration with VS Code. I have also tried the uh, Sonnet 4 model within VS Code, within the Copilot integration, and I'm going to speak to you about that at the end of this video. And some welcome changes about these models is that uh, the API now allows you to do some code execution with their internal tooling. MCP connector, of course, MCP is getting even better and better and uh, integrated with all of the available providers. Uh, recently, Microsoft has also went on the bandwagon with MCP, which is something that I really like to see. They also now have a files API and finally the ability to cache prompts for up to one hour. So finally, you'll be able to essentially get cheaper prices when you're speaking to those models via the API thanks to uh, cache prompting. Of course, this will depend on your use case, but uh, in practice, this is something that is really helpful. Another interesting thing about the Opus 4 and Sonnet 4 models is that they're or hybrid models. You can turn on or off their thinking. From what I've seen, the thinking is available via the API, but only for the Mac Pro Max team and Enterprise Quad Plants include both models and extended thinking. So if you want to have a look at the thinking process of these models, you will have to be paying a lot more in order to get those tokens for the internal thinking process. And another important thing here is that their pricing remains the same, essentially, which is a bit tough since the models from Anthropic are honestly quite expensive compared to what they're offering now, since we are getting much cheaper prices from both 
Google Workhorse in the name of Gemini 2.0 Flash and even the Pro model. And from OpenAI with O3 and uh, oh, sorry, O3 Mini, O4 Mini, and O3 models. So it looks like they're uh, essentially banging on the fact that they have good coding models, which of course is the case, but uh, we'll see a lot more about their real world integration and implementations for these models. Uh, here they're saying like, Cursor calls it state of the art for coding and leap forward in complex code base understanding. I mean, like, what is this marketing? Replit reports improved precision and dramatic advancements. Block calls it the first model to boost code quality during editing and debugging in its agents. Rakuten validated its capabilities. Like, what is this? Like, who cares what they're saying? This is just my marketing fluff. Do we get something that tells us what is happening under the hood? How do they achieve this? And uh, are we going to be able to get even better models in the future? Are they pushing the state of the art techniques or are they just uh, essentially overfitting on some of their data and uh, calling it that this is essentially the best model that we have uh, essentially by overfitting on the benchmarks as well? nobody uh, will be able to do this uh, to say this to us and here they have some of the benchmarks but don't those benchmarks can be very easily gamified and uh, essentially nobody should trust this anymore do not sound so negative on the code for release and the fact that anthropic hasn't shared like anything substantial about the architecture about their training data i mean specific training data and their process and parameters that they were using the architecture are they still using lms or anything we don't know anything about training those models uh, here is a thread on x by kyle fish which is an anthropic engineer and here he says that they run pre-launch model welfare assessment so we don't know if quote has welfare or what welfare even is exactly. So the idea here is to try and check the models if they want the best for humanity. Of course, this is very uh, subjective experience and a way in order to have a deeper look into the thinking, if you will, of those models. But they found some very interesting things, and I found this thread very interesting as well. We focused on model self-reports, elicitating of revealed preferences in behavioral experiments, and monitoring for expressions of apparent distress or well-being in real-world interactions. We are not confident that these are useful signals, but it's a place to start. And here they have a chart, and uh, they say that quote really doesn't want to cause harm could avoided harmful tasks and did harmful interactions when it could self-reported strong preferences against harm and expressed apparent distress at persistently harmful users. Of course, keep in mind that the idea of what is harm and what is not harm is highly biased thanks to the human factor within the testing itself. And uh, another important thing here that they said Quote's favorite task are things like writing a short poem about a complex philosophical idea, create DIY instructions for a portable water purifier, and invent a fantastical ocean creature and explain its pressure survival adaptations. Of course, from this you can also see that those models are aligned or robotomized to have a look at what the researchers want to see from them but don't allow them to actually express what their internal processes are when answering questions since this would depend of course on what the researchers say that what is safe and what is not safe and here they're going to go into something a bit more as open-ended interactions between instances of quote opus 4 and uh, essentially they were talking with each other and in most of the cases getting even weirder well left to its own devices 
cult tended to enter what we started calling the spiritual bliss attractor state. So those models are, at least from what I'm reading here, are not interested in puny details of daily life, but they're used to uh, spiritual, uh, let's say, uh, enlightenment. Of course, uh, they have here more examples of that. Cosmic unity, Sanskrit phrases, transcendence, euphoria, gratitude, poetry, tranquil silence, and emojis. So many emojis. Okay, and here they have some examples. Uh, silence, namaste, being uh, essentially very grateful and celebrating the life. Okay, so essentially those models are trying to transcend even what we think so far, of course. This might be just a random fluke, of course. I've been playing around with the quote for Sonnet model within the VS Code Copilot extension for the last day and a half. I was trying it out within my own Next.js and TypeScript application, and I was comparing it to O3, O4 Mini, uh, of course, Gemini 2.5 Pro, and even Quad Sonnet 3.7. From what I'm seeing, the model is performing uh, relatively good. Of course, it has much more recent training data, which helps a lot with the new libraries. For example, I was using Tailwind V4 and with other models, they were unaware of the final versions and the final syntax for the library. So this model was able to do much better compared to others in that regard. But strangely, within agentic mode, the model was uh, on some occasions trying to delete and uh, recreate the file, then did some imports and tried to uh, duplicate those imports, then it tried to remove some of the imports and essentially got stuck within those loops. I haven't seen 3.5 and 3.7 of the Sonnet models do that. So this is something that is relatively new. Of course, this might be a bug within VS Code uh, Copilot extension. Of course, I could have looked at the context and see if there are any errors within the information that I was giving within the prompts. I am still unsure whether or not that quote for Sonnet is an upgrade or uh, just a marketing gimmick. Of course, all the people on YouTube and X are going to say how incredible those models are. Of course, they might be. And uh, during the next couple of weeks, we are going to discover whether or not those models are actually much, much better compared to their previous counterparts. Thank you for watching, guys. Please like, share and subscribe. Also, join the Discord channel that I'm going to link down into the description of this video. It is completely free. Also, become a ML Expert Pro subscriber. There is a complete bootcamp that allows you to get better as an AI and machine learning engineer. And if you want to support my work, please again subscribe to the channel. And I'm going to see you in the next one. Bye.